What's good, Enum fam? It's your guys at Ed. And it's your girl, Michelle. And we at you this time with a story or story time. Or some advice. There we go. Because we all need advice. We're never too old Sometimes we to get help. some advice and learn new things each and every day. And we wanted to come to you guys and discuss a topic relating to relationships. Well, it kind of dawned on us or it kind of hit home for us because we've been stuck at home. And we've had we've been up under each other and you know nobody's been able to go outside, get in the air, do anything. And sometimes we start clashing and bumping heads. Bumping heads. You guys are new to the channel. Eddie and I have been together for about eight years, married for six, mm. but we always run it off to ten. It's been a, it's been <laughs> it feels like forever. But we just wanna come here and just like just address how some relationships can be toxic. And sometimes you can be in a relationship and not even realize that it's toxic for you and you don't know how to get out of it. Eddie and I are imperfect. Eddie and I have been through a lot of things together and we are learning each and every day about each other, but we wanted to point out certain things that we feel are toxic in a relationship. So if you're somebody who is struggling with a relationship, having a hard time, and you you don't know which way to turn, then maybe some of these tips that we give you, it will help you to determine which way you need to go. Either you stay in that relationship, is it worth it, or you need to hit the road. Or can you fix it? Or should you leave? Get out of the two. So before we get into this video, make sure that you like, you comment, you subscribe. Make sure you turn on the post notifications so you're notified every time that we drop another one of these bangers. And don't forget to follow us on all our other social medias. We got Instagram, we got Snapchat, we got TikTok. Also, Babe has his own personal channel. I also have my hair channel. So y'all need to go over there and follow me. Boy, where can they find all that stuff? In the description down below. Down below, that's all you gotta do. All the information will be right there for you. So just go click that. We're gonna jump right into this video. So, I mean, I guess you could say the definition of a toxic relationship would be one that- Is unhealthy. It's unhealthy. Maybe even one side is more miserable than the other or- It's dysfunctional. Both of you guys are not happy. It's that's what it is. basically, because anything that's not running smoothly and it's a constant fight, that's dysfunction. The first thing is arguing constantly in front of people or even private. private is still not healthy. Nobody wants to deal with arguing. It's okay to get your point across, but if you're constantly waking up if fighting. You, if you wake up on go time, you have to rearrange your whole yes. entire everything. Yes. Even in certain in certain instances, when you've been with somebody for a long time, been doing it and doing it and doing it Same day routine. in day out, mm -hmm. and like we're saying, it's not something that is foreign to a lot of people. But at the same time, you gotta know you have to identify when you're in a toxic relationship. You're in in, in something that needs to completely be disbanded or maybe it's something that you can fix if you both realize it mm -hmm. you both have to realize it both of you have got to be on board if you're not on board you know what ship is going to so if you're arguing a lot then you need to figure out why you guys arguing arguing is the first first no-no in an in a unhealthy relationship it's okay to bicker here and there because we're imperfect nobody's gonna wake up happy every day gonna have different opinions and stuff like that but arguing 24 seven, that's very toxic. Another thing I feel like is toxic is when you're constantly blaming the other person for your fault, for your flaws. So if somebody's, if your partner is coming to you and telling you, this is what you're doing to make me feel bad, but you're defending yourself and blaming them and flipping it so it's them, that's toxic because one, you're not listening to them and two, mm -hmm. you're placing blame on them. What does that do to your other person? It makes them feel low. It makes them feel like what they say means nothing. And it's less than. It makes the other person mm -hmm. feel that way. So you just have to take the other person's feelings into consideration. Everyone knows the age old cliche quote. Mm -hmm. Treat others how you would like to be treated. Very much should go towards a relationship because at no time should you be able to look at a conversation, hear a conversation, see a text message or anything like that mm -hmm. between you and your significant other and somebody's like, wow. That's how the man or the woman who loves you talks to you? Yeah. Damn. You need to, you know, stop placing blame so much. We all are accountable for our actions. We all make mistakes. If your partner is coming to you and telling you, hey, this is what you did, I don't like the way you make me feel, yeah. and even though you're upset with them, you're gonna find something in your mind as a defense mechanism to say, well, hey, you did this. I feel like you need to listen to the person first, admit to what you did, recognize what you did, process it, because a lot of times when we're mad, we don't want to we don't want to accept the fact that we were wrong. We just want to get our point across. Everybody wants to be heard. 
So I feel like if you can properly listen to each other's sides and give and, and take a second because sometimes when you're mad, the adrenaline is so high that you're not listening. You don't want to hear anything. You not you don't want to listen you and you have hear. to listen. So if you guys are just yelling, yapping, yapping, yapping. and nobody's listening and you're talking over one another, that's toxic because you're not listening to, 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 to understand. You're listening just to be heard. The other thing that's toxic, I feel, mm -hmm. is no communication or lack of communication. Yeah. When you are with someone and you guys are in a functional relationship, communication is key. Key. Like mm -hmm. everyone says, it's key. And that's, it's true. You've got to talk about how you feel. You got to talk about the small things. You got to talk about the, the things that are humongous. You always have to address the elephant in the room. And I feel like in toxic relationships, nine times out of 10, you are living in a house or you're succeeding in a relationship where there's a million elephants in the room. You might as well live in a zoo. No one ever wants to address it. When you are in a toxic relationship, you have got to communicate, but you don't even know that that's what you're doing. Sometimes people don't know how to communicate though. That's, that's where I feel like the problem comes in. Sometimes people, the way they communicate is how they communicate. You can say, I don't like how you made me feel. Or you can be like, I don't like the way you made me feel. Da -da 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 -da. It's all about how you project what you're saying to the person. What you say is how you say it. So if you're not going to say it nice, don't say it. The other person's not going to receive it well. And what is that going to do? If I say something nasty to Eddie, I'm not going to expect him to respond back to me in a nice way. Well, of course I would, but most people, your natural instinct is somebody says something nasty to you, you're going to be like, what? Either yeah. you're going to think about it, let it process, or you're just going to lash out. So you need to be careful how you talk to each other. Another toxic trait, I would say, is constantly bringing up things in the past. Oh my, let it go. Reliving things in the past. And you can't just say, let it go. You yeah. like, no, you're saying that now, maybe. For yourself, I'm sure there was a couple of times or certain times where mm -hmm. things were hard for you. So it's not easy for, for them to Oh no, in the moment. That's what I'm saying. It's that important. But I'm saying in the long run. In the long run, the goal is to let it go. Because if you're holding on to things that your partner has done to your spouse, your boyfriend, your husband, whatever, girlfriend, that's not gonna help you guys grow. You're gonna stay stagnant because you're still angry. So the least little bit thing that he does or she does, it's going to bring back memories of how, what he did or what she did to you in the past. And that's just gonna cause distance between y'all. One thing that you can't do when you're coming into a relationship, mm -hmm. do not bring your baggage. What I mean when I say that is, you cannot make someone else pay for the past pain that you have already went through. Sometimes you need to leave that back out there. And if you can't, mm -hmm. and that person needs to be understanding about you and what you come with and how you come with, you need to do some fine tuning in yourself. But I feel like we all come with baggage. Because before, yeah, but we, you can't. Everybody, everybody's been in a relationship before, before their new relationship. And there's certain things that they were left with that that one person embedded in them. But that made them look at life totally different because of the hurt that, that they, they brought onto that person. I get what you're saying, but I feel like you need to properly heal before you jump into another relationship. This is true. And sometimes women, I speak for myself, I've done it in the past before even Eddie. I feel like jumping into another relationship would help me heal from my previous relationship when in all reality I was still hurting and I just wanted to try to forget about that person. And I still had a lot of stuff with me, which then didn't end well with my relationship. You didn't get closure. I didn't get closure and I was still angry. So I found like a little, I was being very, I was critiquing everything that this other person did because he didn't do it like my other mm -hmm. relationship. And I was, I just found myself, it, it just wasn't healthy. It wasn't healthy, so. I feel like um, even in myself, okay to identify all of the toxic traits and you can do that until the cows, cows come home. But at the same time, if you don't know that you're the toxic one or you're participating in being toxic, Maybe you don't even know it, like you said. A lot of people don't know Maybe it. Maybe you don't know it. I mean, in, in myself, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I don't think I'm perfect, but I did not know that I possess some toxic traits. I didn't know it. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry that this, my marriage and my relationship mm -hmm. in certain contexts has made me learn certain things about myself I would have rather learn it with you than learn it with anyone else because I want to correct it now. Exactly. Because you're someone who's, if you weren't willing to, if, I, if we identified that we had a problem mm -hmm. and then you're not willing to work or willing to do something, that's a problem. Then I would be like, okay, 
even though I have some toxic, you know, my hands, my hands are in this as well. I should go because I want to work and I want to work on myself. I want to develop us. You don't want to do that. Or you haven't even seen that you have a problem too. It's just like you said, with mm -hmm. the blaming. It's me, 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 me. Yeah. I have the problem. How can I ever know that? Exactly. I'm stuck underneath all the blame. Exactly. That's, that's unhealthy. And I feel like in a lot of relationships, everybody wants to get their point across. And when you're up, another person not receiving you well and like, oh, well, it's you. And oh, well, you're overreacting. Who are you? Who are we to tell anybody that their pain is not important. Our emotions is real. That's what I've come to realize. So if Eddie's telling me that I did something that hurt him, even if I don't think it's a big deal, he's coming to me telling me that it's hurting him. That's a problem. How can you tell somebody how to feel? Exactly. That's what I, that's what I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, we, we've learned that together. Oh yeah. How can you tell some, I might want her to not be hurt by a situation or not be angry or upset at me. Mm -hmm. but that's how she feels. And I have to, another thing building on that, I have to allow for your emotion to change. I have to allow. I have to allow that. Same way you have to do for me. So even if it takes, you know, you need to go out for a walk. Yeah. You need a second. Space is definitely um, an important thing. And I will be honest again with Eddie and I. We have been through some stuff, mm -hmm. and we're just gonna keep it like that. But we so have to. <laughs> we have to learn, and we're still learning each day because oh, yes. it's not easy being young. It's not easy being married, and it's not easy having kids and trying to be married and run a household and be responsible and have bills. So all of these things that we had to learn when we were together, we didn't have to do before we got together. Mm -mm. So when we got together, we had to become adults. And we were we had to adapt to what it was like doing all of this stuff. And it became overwhelming at certain times for us. And then that's when attitudes flare up. You know, I, I say something slick, he says something back slick, and before we know it, it erupts. It gets crazy. So crazy. And then once we take a break and we're like, we just were arguing over the stupidest things. You know, sometimes you just, you have to- Step back and just look. You have to take a break to realize, is this what you want? Or, you know, maybe I did mess up. Maybe I, I shouldn't have said it to her How like about that. this was just so stupid. We have other things to be worrying about. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, bigger fish to fry. Than to be arguing with each other. But it's, it's always gonna be um, a work in progress for us, probably for you. But you have to remember if this is this person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Is it worth you? Is he worth your tears? Mm -hmm. Is she worth your tears? Are they making you sick? Are they physically making you sick? Emotionally draining you? You're tired. You're miserable. You have to see what you're doing you to this to person. Are you are you are you deteriorating this person or are you enhancing this person? Exactly. Are you helping or are you hurting this person? Exactly. You have to see that because if your regular way of doing and functioning is that 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 and mm -hmm. your emotions are just that important, then maybe you need to take some time by yourself. Okay to bend, and I know even for like I don't know all the way, but for being with being with Eddie, I have noticed that. Sometimes his pride gets in the way. Mm -hmm. A man, I'm not gonna say for everybody, but for my relationship, sometimes Eddie does not want to apologize. Sometimes Eddie thinks that he's right. I don't I'm know stubborn. if it's the Libra, it's the Libra in him or what, but he does not like to be wrong in situations. I mean, hell, we all don't like to be wrong, but wrong is wrong. And it's okay to apologize. And sometimes you can diffuse the situation by just sitting down and just saying, you know what, I messed up. Even if you don't feel like you did truly, just say it to make your partner feel better and let them know that you're listening to them because all of that fighting, the cursing, even abusive relationships, thank God we've never, like, we don't, that's something we can't relate. Mm -mm. But if you're in a relationship where you're getting hit or you're getting mistreated like that, you really need to really, like, do some deep thinking because that's not the way life is. That's not the way love is supposed to feel. We didn't reiterate that and say that in the beginning. Before you even got into the rest of this video, if you're here right now at this point, those are golden points. Mm -hmm. If you are, if there is abuse going on, physical abuse, or mental, mental abuse, mm -hmm. even emotional or sexual, you need to get up out of there. It's not just being toxic, that could be fatal. It could be fatal. It could be fatal. Another reason why we come out and we say the things that, we, that we've experienced mm -hmm. and we've lived through and right. we've been through is so that our viewers, our subscribers, anyone listening, can just catch an earful of this and be like, oh, well, you know Maybe what? Maybe you need to hear this. That's why we do this. Yeah, let you me know, we do these sit down videos so that some people out there may not have family members or anybody that they can actually go to. So we want to be that. We want to be the ones that can, you know, spread some love, some positivity out there, give you, give you some words of wisdom and encouragement. Listen, it's going to be okay. 
all you need to do is you need to just weigh it out if the bad outweighs the good it's, it's just like a seesaw if there's more bad than there's good mm -hmm. then you need to really figure that out it should not be like this you come to your significant other or your relation in your relationship and you say listen this is what i'm seeing this is what it's weighing and this is what it's looking like mm -hmm. and it's not weighing in my favor it should be equal if anything but it's definitely not weighing in my favor if they're not willing to work and do the work you need to self-preservate. You have to do that. I feel like a lot of times in a relationship, we get comfortable. Mm -hmm. That is the key point, and then that's for me, from my experience. When you're with somebody for such a long time, you tend to change over the years. You feel like you don't have to do as much what you, what when you, you first started, but that's incorrect. You start practicing those same behaviors, your relationship is gonna spiral. It's not gonna. It's gonna go down because you're you're feeling free a lot. I don't. I don't need to. I don't need to show him any more affection. I know that he's just gonna be there. When in the beginning, it was all kissing and cuddling and stuff like that. When you're comfortable with somebody, you feel like you don't need to do what you need, what, what, what you were first doing, and that's that's not gonna work. Really need to think about your relationship that you're in, and remember, there's plenty of the fish in the sea. This person is not the only person for you if it's toxic, and if they're willing to work with you, then. And, and they're showing you that they're, they're willing to work with you. They're not just telling you because talk is cheap. I'm a big person on actions. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you just say, oh, well, I'm going to do this. No, show me that you're going to do this. You know what I mean? So let that marinate. Um, Sometimes you need to take yourself out of there. So when you're doing that, like, like she said, certain people, when they're comfortable with something, oh, they're not going to leave. Oh, they're not this. And when you turn around and leave, it's a rude awakening. For your for for that other person. Yeah, and sometimes you need to split up and see what it is. What is what is, what what's is life like without this? Woman? Yeah, this was crazy. Like that would I be? And if you're if you feel content without that person, why why you guys split up and you and you feel like you feel lighter and you feel like oh my god the weight is lifted, then you know that that person is you know that person is not for you. What you call a dead weight. Yeah, and if you're ha and if you're miserable and you're just like oh my god. I can't see my life without him or her, then you know, give it time. I feel like everything will work itself out. If it's meant to be for you, it'll be for you. So I just wanted to come here and let you guys know that our relationship is far from perfect. We do have our bad days, but we also have our good days. And at the end of the day, we're willing to work with each other and we're, we're trying to bring out the best in both of each other. It's not easy being in a relationship, but being in a toxic relationship is even worse. You don't want that for yourself. Maybe somebody needs to hear it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And our post notification shout out goes to Lily Baby, who says, you guys are one of my favorite YouTube couples. Heart, heart, heart. Hey, love supporting y'all. And we love you too. Thank you so much. And Ari McPhee, who said, Michelle, I see you're still alive since the last prank. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Love the challenges. Thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. She Make sure to, Yeah, I'm alive. I ain't going nowhere. Make sure you guys follow us on all our social medias. Follow Eddie on his YouTube channel. Follow me. All of that will also be down in the description. And if you share our videos on Instagram and repost it, tag us in it. That's also a chance for you to get a post notification shout out as well. We on the road to 100K, y'all. Stay beautiful. Stay Ooh. blessed. Peace.